Goodbye. Come down here and round there. Easy. You seem pretty confident. No problem. Good luck, Fred. Right. Give us a wave from the centre. Oh, uh, see you in ten minutes. Ah, this way. It's just that everything looks different on the inside. Well, try. Try, she says. It's all right for her. Now then, uh, that way, I think. Started here in the centre and came out here. So by now he could be sort of somewhere around here. You got out? But you just. Do you know you could have done with something like that? Oh, that's what I was asking for a map. Here's another part of that story about the traveller who was lost in a strange world like me. Entry in the ship's log for the 64th day of my voyage. I have come by accident on a strange world, being filled with the most beautiful flowers and trees. I climbed a tree to get a better view, and was about to climb down again, when below me I saw something most unusual. 
A triangle was floating about a meter above the level of the grass. What it was, why it was there, and how it was held up were questions I couldn't begin to answer. Then, in floated a pentagon. As I watched, the triangle did a very strange thing indeed. It traveled very gently round the pentagon, as if it was feeling its shape, or counting its sides even. All of a sudden, I had an idea. I took off one of my boots, tied a length of string to the laces, and gently lowered it towards the two shapes. It was the pentagon which moved first. It came over to my boot and moved round, feeling it just as the triangle had done a few moments earlier. I was so fascinated that I scrambled down the tree, bent down and placed my ear level with the shapes. Immediately, I heard high-pitched voices. It was then that I realized I'd stumbled across Flatland. Flatland is that world in which nothing has height or thickness. This novel idea quite took my breath away, and for some moments I pondered on what life must be like in a world where height has no meaning. What would they feel if some of our objects were put into their world? So, with great care, I attached a long thread to a number of things that I had on my person, and gently lowered these into Flatland. First, my telescope. Then, the second of my sea boots. And lastly, the ship's cat, which by lucky coincidence I carried with me. done, I returned to my ship and set sail on the next stage of my voyage. Hmm. What kind of world was that, Fred? Well, it's a bit difficult to imagine, isn't it, really? Because nothing would have any thickness, mm. so everything would be flat. Well, a flat land. Yes. I think I get the idea. I'll, I'll show you. Do you remember that boot? In the story? Mm -hmm. Now then, suppose you were a flatlander. Right, and this thing arrived. Uh -huh. Well, the first thing you'd feel would be the bottom of the boot, like that. Mm -hmm. Right, then a moment later, you'd feel the middle of the boot. Yeah. And then, eventually, the top of the boot. Ah. See? Yes, I've got it. So the only way you could tell one slice from another would be to feel round it. That's it. Oh. Do you think there could be a flatland somewhere? Oh. I don't know. It depends how you look at things. What do you think? Why don't you come have a look at these? Now, those blocks are for you. Yes. And all you've got to do is find the block that I'm describing. Right. Okay? And you can't look. Oh. Oh, all right. Right. Now, my block has got two squares on the bottom and one on the top, on the left-hand side. Uh, it's two, two on the bottom mm -hmm. and one on the top. Right. Uh, no, no, two on the bottom. Ah, only one on the top. Can't be there. Um, two on the bottom. Two on the bottom. Two on the bottom. No, can't be that one. Ah, ah, two, two on the bottom. Yes. And one on the top. Yes, left hand side. Yes. Ah, what does it look like from the other side? Uh. Well, it looks much the same, actually. Uh -huh. uh, only sometimes the top one moves over to the right. Uh, looks the same. Uh, some, some. Ah, sometimes it's on the right. Yes. Well, in that case, I've got it. Right. Oh no, no! Look, Fred, they're not the same. Are you sure? Oh, you're right. 
But look, that's what you were describing. You see, look, there's two, two on the bottom mm -hmm. and one on the top. And sometimes it's on the right, sometimes it's on the left. Mm. But they're still different shapes. Hmm. Perhaps looking at the sides isn't enough. Would seem so. Yeah, it's all a matter of how you look at things, isn't it? Hmm. Even a square sometimes doesn't look like a square. Now, there's one for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, what's this for? Well, I want you to keep this square inside your square. Ah. Right, sir. Uh, oh, well, that's easy. But I'm going to move it. Ooh. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh. Uh, yes, well. Uh, uh, that, mm. <laughs> well, that's a bit more difficult. <laughs> Why don't you try it? Ladies and gentlemen, gather round for the wonderful Moving Square Show. Four sides and no holds barred. Well, how did you get on? Well, all right, all right. I could, um, I could handle it when it was getting bigger and smaller, mm. and when it was turning. But what was I supposed to do when the square sort of went like that? Do you know what I mean? Oh, well, tilted. Did you try uh, tilting your frame? Oh, I, I never thought of it. <sighs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. It's a very small corner. It is too. Got a mystery. Now this oh. is a mystery object. What do you think it is? You told me I was going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the face. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Well, I found it in a shop. Yeah. Let's lift it up a little bit.